Dragon Ball Super is worse than you remember. I, like many other Dragon Ball fans, were excited at the prospect of seeing our favorite Z fighters once again on a weekly basis as it's been a long time prior to the release of Super. Between the time of the end of DBZ and Super, we had a subpar non-canon series, a few movies, and some games to hold us over. After the success of the two newer DBZ movies, Battle of the Gods and Resurrection F, a new series based on the Dragon Ball franchise became about what we know now as Dragon Ball Super. The idea of a new Dragon Ball story has intrigued myself and many other fans, but this is where the problem soon starts to begin. As successful as Dragon Ball Super was by the end of its showing, a lot of fans noted that there were plenty of issues with the series. Things like the characterization, animation, plot, all of which were not only subpar in comparison to earlier Dragon Ball material, but just plain sucked in the grand scheme of things. Despite all this, fans tuned in every week to see the latest episode of the series, hoping for it to just get better over time. But looking back at it now, better time could have been spent being productive or just watching other anime. One of the biggest issues with Dragon Ball Super is the plot in general. Each arc of the Super storyline has many flaws within it, many I'm sure people were just trying to ignore as the show was airing. The first obvious point being that the first two arcs were retellings of the Battle of Gods and Resurrection F storyline from the DBZ movies that were released prior, one of which was released the same year as the Dragon Ball Super anime. I was generally annoyed by the fact that they were retelling the story as we have just seen them come to pass already. So seeing the story again as the first two arcs covering the first 27 episodes was annoying and meant that we had to wait before we get into the newer material. Now for business reasons, I see why they did this as to prep for the newer material and have fans anticipate it more, but man oh man, this was a drag. Especially now considering that the extra time that they had to develop the story in future arcs went to crap. But as for the first two initial arcs, I'm not mad at their inclusion as if someone wanted to watch the story of DBS in a series format rather than a movie format, then they have the option, but in my opinion, you're better off watching the movies because they tell the story better and they don't add any extra material that has nothing to do with the actual story. For example, Captain Ginyu shows up in the Super Show, but it amounted to nothing aside from Vegeta getting his get back on him, as well as the inclusion of Goten and Trunks, which made Frieza ponder on the future Trunks that killed him back in the day, but that's all that really came from it. The movie already wasn't that good enough to begin with, so these random inclusions just felt forced if anything. The Battle of Gods arc didn't see that many changes in the anime in comparison to the movie, so no need to comment on that. As for the new material in Super, there's plenty of issues to pick apart when it comes to the story in the arcs. The 6 Universe Tournament arc was cool in introducing us to other universes in the Dragon Ball story, but the characters themselves weren't all that interesting, save for Kaba for being a Saiyan and Frost for seemingly being a good version of Frieza. Hit was only made interesting because of his stoic attitude and demeanor, which gave the audience the impression that he'd be the one to give Goku and Vegeta a problem. I'll get some more on that when I dissect the characterization in the story, but just know that this gives boring vibes throughout. The arc itself was fine though. Things don't get bad until the next arc, being the Goku Black arc. It's a shame too, since the beginning of the arc started off so strong with the juxtaposition between what was happening in the Future Trunks timeline and the main timeline, one being more peaceful while the other is seemingly being destroyed by its previous savior. A lot of the issues with this arc though is going to relate to time travel. Bringing up time travel in any form of media is going to be a double-edged sword, because as cool as the concept is, if done poorly, even for one moment, could screw up how we perceive the story of a show. In Dragon Ball Super's case, it's one of the dumbest plot tropes, essentially creating multiple timelines by the end of the arc, and it being a use for Zumasu, one of the worst villains in the series, which I'll get to a little later. This arc also had some of the biggest plot blunders, specifically relating to Trunks. Him achieving his Super Saiyan rage transformation was out of nowhere and didn't make sense when it came to competing with the god level characters, and him beating Zamasu at the end with his own version of a spirit bomb with like 30 people to help form it is just downright stupid. Vegeta should have been the one to have the kill as it made the most logical sense, but I guess the writers of the Super Storyline wanted to try something different by destroying expectations as opposed to writing something logical. Then you have Zeno just blowing up the timeline in general, which then led to Trunks and Mai to travel to an alternate timeline where I'm pretty sure that they have to be with another version of themselves. This arc just sucked. Then you have the Universal Survival arc, which is just a boring arc in general. Now there were some top tier moments in the arc, such as Goku vs Jiren and the final bout in the end, but the main drawback with this arc was that it did nothing to intrigue me with the other characters from the various universes aside from 6, 7, and 11. Many drawn out fights with characters that don't really stand a chance against other characters from universe 7, so when they do get into a fight with each other, you're left wondering when it's going to end and get to the good parts with universe 11 and Jiren. A mediocre arc in general, and it's unfortunately the last arc in the anime, leaving a bad taste in our mouths. You know what would satisfy your taste buds though? It's you liking the video and subscribing for more anime content. I'm primarily a Naruto channel, but do aim to upload more Dragon Ball and potentially other anime related content, so be sure to stick around by subscribing and hitting the bell icon for notifications. You won't regret it. Basic plot aside, what really ruins Dragon Ball Super to a lot of people is the character regression of a lot of characters, specifically with Goku. Goku is portrayed as an idiot throughout the show, wanting to only fight strong opponents for the fun of it, as opposed to fighting only when necessary. Now, Goku has always been portrayed as a person of growth when it comes to strength, but never to the point to where it blindsides him. His want to fight stronger 
stronger opponents is what led to the tournament of power in which all the universes are battling for their universe's survival and this is never really challenged from goku's friends all that much aside from beers trying to stop him initially from contacting xeno speaking of goku's friends throughout the entirety of super they were pretty much useless in stopping majority of the major threats of each arc as it really has become the goku and vegeta show being that they are leagues ahead of the other characters at least the earthlings a prime example being that when frieza came back and some of the earthlings barely dealt with three soldiers and none of which were able to do anything to frieza in his first form including gohan while on the top of the gohan let me say that i am one of the few who is okay with him regressing a bit in strength since it's in his character to not be willing to fight unless forced upon this would just allow gohan to push that mental block and still wanting to train to protect his family and loved ones the only real issue was that he became too weak and it wasn't until superhero where we see things develop for his character a whole six years after the original super anime was over that said everyone else is pretty much fodder in the grand scheme of things unlike in dragon ball z where even if the characters weren't strong enough they still had a role to play power scaling in dragon ball as a whole has always been funky but never to the point to where it was too ridiculous the main thing people like to bring up is the zenkai boost which allows the saiyan who is closer to the brink of death once they healed up become immensely stronger i'm personally not upset with that now going to super the power scaling is just ridiculous especially when god key is a thing in the series now frieza after coming back to life noted that he hadn't trained a day in his life prior but after doing so for four months had powers that rivaled with super saiyan blue that just doesn't make any sense you also have super saiyan blue goku sparring off with guys like krillin and android 17 even though they should be significantly weaker now it's safe to assume that goku was holding back while in the form but that doesn't mean he shouldn't be using that form in the first place as it would be his strongest form at that point in time the worst offender to me is trunks with the super saiyan rage transformation how the form came about how was it able to fend off against zamasu how was he able to defeat a few zamasu with a random spirit bomb formed by the power of 30 people you tell me i can't defend the power scaling of the show as it's just pulling stuff out of his butt to justify these power creeps to make the characters look stronger one of the most notable things about the dragon ball series is the transformations but super takes things a bit too far compared to dragon ball z where we really only had super saiyans 1 through 3 to hold us over and it felt like an added benefit to the plot as opposed to an end all be all for the arcs in super we had super saiyan god blue blue kaioken blue evolution rage rose ultra instinct omen Atomus ultra instinct and golden frieza this is fine for business reasons as it gets people to buy all the toys and merchandise relating to the transformations but it highlights an issue with the writing as they keep on pulling out these transformations to push the plot forward and beating an enemy when it always wasn't the case for example in the boo arc super saiyan 3 wasn't the end all be all for beating the enemy but everyone played their part in helping goku forming the spirit bomb while in super saiyan 1 it just seems like every arc in super is making the transformations be the highlight as opposed to it being an asset to the overall plot that's why i say it's transformation overload when it comes to dragon ball super when it comes to the villains or antagonists throughout super it's a mixed bag in my opinion the best antagonist being beerus as his personality with being a god of destruction meshes well when interacting with the likes of goku frieza coming back sounds cool on paper but you're left underwhelmed with his showings in the resurrection f arc black goku and zamasu being the absolute worst villains as their motives were completely stupid and wanting to end all mortals after witnessing one time mortals weren't acting right with each other and jiren who was being hyped up throughout the tournament of power being a bland generic strong dude our heroes would have to fight against and you can say the same thing about hit in the universe 6 versus 7 arc most of these characters leave a lot to be desired as i felt they had a lot of potential specifically with zamasu as i felt like he had the perfect setup to becoming one of the best villains with him being this godly creature who wants to pass judgment on a world that he sees as troublesome the execution just wasn't there for the villains and in general dragon ball super wasn't well executed anyways all in all while there is a lot of potential with the super series we can't ignore the shortcomings that came about all those years ago stuff like the recent dragon ball super movies and the manga run have fans excited for more from the franchise but we'll have to wait and see especially with dragon ball daima being a thing coming up next so i'll pass the question off to you guys what did you think about the original run of the dragon ball super anime did you enjoy it more than i did what are some highlights for you i'd love to get y'all's thoughts so let me know in the comment section below and if you want to see more dragon ball content click the card you see here which will take you to my video saying why i think naruto is better than dragon ball z i'm the curly hodokage and i hope you all have an amazing and blessed day peace